This weather report is brought to you by Specsavers. It's good to have another look. 50 years ago tonight, the Ipswich community was in a state of deep shock. A series of huge blasts had ripped through a local coal mine, killing more than a dozen men. It still ranks as one of Australia's worst mining disasters. Max Futcher reports. At about a quarter to three this morning, three shattering explosions rocked the Box Flat colliery. Box Flat was one of Australia's newest and deepest mines opened to feed the furnaces of the neighbouring Swan Bank power station. That morning, six kilometres away, reporter John Knox had just climbed out of bed to get ready for the dawn shift. I felt something. I sort of felt and heard it. It was, it was a combination of both through the feet. Um, it was boom, boom. The afternoon before, a small fire had spontaneously erupted deep in the number five mine. Attempts during the night to put it out proved fruitless. Eventually, a 14-strong team would try to attack it from the interconnected number seven mine, but gas and coal dust had built up to a critical level. This is the entrance to number seven shaft. The force of the explosion is self-evident. A huge gaping hole. Alan Berlin might have died had he not been told to take a break. I was looking out and the whole paddock was on fire. Three men above ground at the entrance to the number five shaft would also perish. William Ray, R-A-E, Drysdale, Kenneth Frank Cobbin, C-A-B-B-I-N, Walter Benjamin Williams. They're the three known to have been killed, bodies of which have been recovered. John Knox was the first reporter on the scene, witness to a day of intense drama. Eventually, it would be decided no one could have survived. When the decision was made to abandon all hope and fill the, uh, the tunnel in, that's when the, real, the, the, the realisation of, uh, uh, of the whole day sunk in. And we gather now, O oh Lord, that we might pay our respects, that we might pay our tribute, that we might remember their families. When another miner died of his injuries a year later, the death toll would stand at 18. In Ipswich, if a family didn't have someone working underground, they knew someone who did. For the community of, uh, of Ipswich and immediate surrounds, it was a real kick in the guts. And we all felt it. And we were all terribly, terribly sad about it. Box Flap would eventually close in 1987, unable to compete with cheaper open-cut coal. It's a part of coal mining, but uh, yeah, again, it's, uh, it's always in everybody's mind. We'd never forget it. In 1997, a fitting memorial to the victims would be erected on the site. A gravestone and permanent reminder of the dangers of working underground. Time for the weather now and let's go to Tony Auden. Tony, you're about to get your running shoes on. Yes, Katrina, not so much tonight, but I will be lacing up for the Sunday Mail Transurban Bridge to Brisbane. It's on the 28th of August and the 10k course runs back over the Gateway Bridge behind me here this evening. We're expecting around 30,000 participants and hoping to raise over $1.2 million for charity. Now, the climb over the uh, bridge here is quite tough on the way up, but well worth it for the views on the way down over Brisbane City and also over Royal Queensland Golf Club, where I am at the moment. A side note, as we're talking about sport, we will have Olympic golf at this spot in exactly 10 years' time. Now, onto the weather. Cloud thickened across the southeast today. A couple of showers, mostly up towards the Sunshine Coast, but light falls there. A cooler day under the cloud cover, 12 to 20 in Redcliffe, a top of just 14 in Toowoomba. Now, looking at the bigger picture, humid onshore winds from a high out in the Tasman Sea, but it's a front and trough further inland that will have a bigger effect on our weather over the next day. It'll sweep over southern Queensland tomorrow, bringing patchy showers and rain inland, while those onshore winds will act to bring more cloud and more showers to the southeast Queensland coast tomorrow too. Around the capitals tomorrow, there's a bit of wet weather around. Pack the brolly if you're headed to most of those southern majors. Melbourne is the exception. A partly cloudy but dry top of 16 degrees there. For northern Queensland, a possible shower in Cairns, more frequent on the exposed parts of that north tropical coast. Partly cloudy for Townsville and Mackay. In the south, a bit more happening. Showers along the coast and ranges with that patchy rain band further inland. Across the southeast, mostly cloudy with those few passing showers, nothing torrential. Any wet weather is most likely right near the coast. A milder night and cool day under that cloud cover, 13 to 21 at Chermside. 
Bodies, not too windy if you don't mind those couple of drops of rain. Northeast winds at 15 knots to start, turning northerly and easing through the day. So here in Brisbane, there's a 70% chance of showers for your Monday. 13 tonight, a top of 21. Then mostly sunny skies return into Tuesday and Wednesday and warming up tops of 24 and 23. In Ipswich, early fog possible into Tuesday and Wednesday mornings. Then speaking of warmth, Friday currently tracking for 28 degrees. Gold Coasters tops above average from Tuesday onwards, peaking at 25 degrees on Friday. And a similar story on the Sunshine Coast, 26 Friday, before our next round of showers and a cooler change into next Saturday. Uh, Katrina, I will see you at the starting line for the Bridge to Brisbane in a few weeks' time. Oh, maybe. I'm not committing just yet. Thank you, Tony. That is all from us this Sunday. Thanks so much for your company. Our Commonwealth Games coverage continues next on 7 and 7 Mate with yet another spectacular night in store. It's day three at the pool and all the big names are in action. Emma McKeon tackles the 50 fly and our three fastest men take on the 100 free. But for now, a big night ahead from all the team. Have a great night.